Well, hello everybody, I am Jay Leonard Jay, and today I'm going to tell you exactly why I think that this little unit over here might be the best desktop interface for your home project studio. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we got something pretty special on the bench today. I've been troubleshooting this thing for about a month uh, now, and I will have to say, uh, this is probably the best desktop audio interface that you could possibly buy right now. This is the Antelope Audio Zen Tour Synergy Core. Uh, who is this thing for? Well, this is, if you're a producer that is traveling a lot, you like to work remotely, but you need power, you need flexibility, or if you're a producer that maybe has a little bit of limited space to work with, this is gonna give you the power of all your rack mount audio interfaces in a nice streamlined portable enclosure. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna give you four reasons uh, why I think this thing is the choice that you should make if you're looking for a small desktop audio interface. And uh, what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna tell you maybe a couple of the things to look out for if you're thinking about buying this. Uh, but I'm definitely keeping this thing. This is, I'm ripping out the stuff in the studio right now. I'm switching Antelope Audio and uh, let's go find out why. <laughs> In my home studio life, I've had four distinct eras. I've had my uh, starting off point, which is my Motu 828, and then I went Apogee Ensemble, and then I went Universal Audio Apollo, and right now I am in the RME, uh, in the YouTube studio, it's a UCX, and then in my recording studio, it's a UFX. The number one thing I missed the most when I switched out of Universal Audio was access to all the really wonderful DSP plugins that had built right in. It really made my workflow so much faster and it's wonderful to have that power right back. Uh, in this unit is a wonderful collection of preamps, compressors, EQs, guitar amp sims that really make life so much easier for me. Uh, when I wanna track my vocals, I can create wonderful professional sounding effects chains with no latency. If I wanna get guitar tones, I don't have to load up my DAW or a VST loader. I could do it all in the box. And finally, when I'm mixing, I don't have to put so much load on the plugins in my computer. I could offload a lot of that work to this unit over here. So it's really, really handy stuff uh, and makes life so much easier. Now, one thing to know though, is uh, when you use the AFX plugins, uh, it's a little bit different than the Universal Audio one in terms of using it in your DAW. You actually have to route these the same way you would route an outboard piece of gear. It's a little bit of an extra step, but just make it as a preset and uh, you don't have to ever think about it again. Or if you want to go the Universal Audio route and just have it as an insert, you can get the AFX to DAW plugin as well. Up next is conversion and clocking. One thing about me, I love using outboard preamps. It's a big part of my workflow. I have both ones with hardware inserts as well as ADAT. Uh, I just like the dynamic range you get with them. I like the character that you get with them. And so when I'm looking for an audio interface, really, really important for me to have great converters and rock solid clocks. And that was actually something I loved about my old Apogee Ensemble. Wonderful converters on that little thing. And this little unit, Man, really solid stuff. Uh, just from a technical standpoint, when you compare this unit to anything in this price range or this size, I haven't seen anything uh, from a spec standpoint that has a better uh, dynamic range or noise threshold than the ones built into here. And obviously when it comes to clocking, uh, Antelope Audio was known first for its master clocks and uh, that technology goes into all their boxes, no jitter, rock solid performance. Obviously just a wonderful thing to have that makes this unit just fantastic. Usually these like tabletop interfaces are made uh, with the idea that only one person's using it, like a singer songwriter or like a producer making beats in his little home studio. And that's why they usually have maybe at most four inputs and uh, four outputs, one headphone jack. Uh, this thing was definitely made with collaboration in mind. There is eight 
physical inputs on this thing. Uh, you could use Hi Z with four of them. You could use a mic with four of them. You could expand eight channels with your eight at ins and outs. You got eight line outs. Spitif, if you're using an amp modeler or a keyboard, it has a built-in talk back mic. Uh, that way you don't have to give up one of your inputs. This thing actually has a pretty nifty touchscreen interface and two built-in reamp boxes. So that means I could actually just track my guitar tones direct to the board and then reamp it with the real thing down the road at a later date. So, so handy. <laughs> Last but not least, this is the feature that really just took me over the edge when it comes to the Zen Tour. Most people ask me why I switched from Universal Audio to RME, and that reason really comes down to the routing matrix in the control panel. I love the RME routing matrix. It has so much wonderful options I can do. I can patch things in so many creative ways, and it's really, really powerful. But this Zen Tour, really takes that routing ability to 11. I can do things with the routing matrix and the control panel that I haven't really seen in any interface ever. And it's just incredibly powerful, incredibly intuitive, and incredibly versatile. Obviously with this thing, you have a really powerful metering section here, your effects panel, four different submixes you can create, but the magic here, right here, this routing panel, I can use some really, really crazy things with this, really taking away the need for any outboard hardware. And just talking about this is its own video in, in itself. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just gonna give you an example of how I can utilize uh, this routing matrix in my workflow. So what I have here is I have my Fender Telecaster and I have it just plugged into uh, preamp number one. So I'm just gonna change the name of preamp number one to dry, because it's my dry guitar tone. And I'm just gonna drag it into my mixer here, into channel three, so we can hear what it sounds like. There it is showing up. Not bad for some dry guitar tones, right? But that's not where the fun starts. Let's go create two different amps. I wanna create like a stereo guitar track, okay? So I'm gonna get that dry sound and I'm gonna put it into two AFX channels. So I'm gonna put my dry in one and I'm gonna put my dry in the other, AFX one and AFX two. If I go into my effects here, I can see that AFX one is a Fender Blackface amp and AFX two is like a Marshall-y kind of thing. So let's just rename that. I'm gonna call this uh, BF for blackface, and then I'm gonna call the other one M for Marshall. All right, so let's drag this into my mix channel and see what this sounds like. And you can tell I have them stereo linked already and panned. All of a sudden I got stereo Marshall and Fender sounds. <laughs> Awesome, so now I got my dry signal and I got a stereo guitar track, but that's not where we're gonna stop. I'm going to go back into the routing matrix and I'm gonna put this dry sound into the reamp out. And that reamp out is gonna go directly into this Benson Chimera. Now, since we're using the reamp, all the impedances are gonna be completely correct, so it's gonna sound just like me plugging my guitar into this amp. And if you look, I have the amp mic'd uh, with this little uh, Lewitt mic and this focus right, and I have that going into preamp number two. So I'm gonna call this Benson. And let's put that Benson into our chain of sounds over here. This is the Benson amp. Awesome, awesome now. Again, we're not done yet. Say I, you know, when I record a mic into my amp, there's a couple things I like to do. I like to put certain effects on it. So I'm gonna get my uh, Benson out and I'm gonna put it into AFX3. Look here in the effects panel, I have AFX3 going into a little bit of a low cut, a little bit of a high cut, and a tape emulator. Now, all of a sudden, I have another sound option with baked in EQ and tape effects.
And just like that, really, really simply, I'm able to create five separate guitar tracks. I have my black face and my Marshall sounds with the AFX, my dry tone, and my Benson mic, and the Benson with effects. And if you look at it in my DAW here, I have all tracks, all five of them, being recorded separately. So if anything doesn't work out, I could always reamp again my dry sound. That is some powerful, powerful routing stuff going on over here. And one of the main reasons why I'm switching to Antelope Audio. Well, as you can tell, I am really, really on board with everything that's going on in this unit. I think this is just fantastic. But there are uh, three things that did stand out to me uh, for all of you people considering picking one of these up. Uh, right now, I'm using version 2.2.4 into a PC running Windows 10. And I'm giving you those specs because I feel like a lot of this is software based. Uh, so it might not actually be an issue by the time you get this unit. The first thing that comes to mind is the overall output level. I find that this unit is just a little bit quieter than all my other audio interfaces. Uh, maybe it's the software thing, or maybe it's what they have to do to get the converters to the quality that they are, but I am riding that fader a little higher than I normally would. Uh, if you are tracking uh, really quietly and you're having trouble hearing yourself, one little tip I do is I'll actually just get two of that input and I'll just link them in the mixer to come up with one double volume fader. Speaking of the faders, uh, I'm not really sold on uh, the taper of the faders. Uh, it's not this gradual smooth transition from quiet to loud. It's just a lot of quiet and a ton of loud, like right at the upper end of things. Uh, so uh, when I'm trying to get my monitoring levels, sometimes it could be a little bit finicky to get it in that right spot. Uh, one thing that I think definitely would be fixed in the software. Uh, and last but not least, the last thing that comes to mind is the uh, plugin, the, the plugin to use it as an insert in your DAW, uh, as opposed to patching it like an outboard piece of gear for the AFX. I wish that they had one for Windows users using the USB. Uh, right now it's only for Mac and it's so useful, especially uh, I was doing a mix and I forgot to save uh, my, uh, my, my settings in my uh, control panel in the Zen Tour. And so when I went back to my session, I was like, <laughs> I was really messed up. So I wish that I had that plugin available to me. Obviously, probably by the time you see this video, they would have fixed that already, but it's definitely one thing to keep in mind. Well, that is it. That is the demo. Thank you all so much for watching. And yeah, if you're curious, uh, the RME UCX is coming out of the YouTube studio. This is the official audio interface for the YouTube studio. In fact, you know what? I wanna get like the big rack unit for my project studio as well, and maybe a discrete floor for my home. Uh, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just getting excited. Uh, please subscribe to the page if you haven't already, and uh, check the links in the description below. Uh, support me on Patreon if you can. Uh, my question for the subscribers today is, when you're going for an audio interface, what is the number one feature you're looking for? Is it the drivers? the converters, uh, the IO, uh, please write it down in the description, or not description, in the comment section below. That being said, I guess I'll see you all soon. Take care and goodbye.